it's always hard when one word appears as a subject for talk. But the word for today is fear. And what to say about it? I'd like to make it personal if I can, even though in some ways it's beyond that. Um, <clears throat> you know, I've been feeling a lot of fear in recent time, months maybe, more than is usual for me. And interestingly, it feels very impersonal. I'm not really feeling afraid for me. You know, I think we've spoken about this so much. I'm having this operation on, on Wednesday, if all goes according to plan, which may not. <clears throat> but I have no fear of that operation. And interestingly, if as unexpected as it might be, I were to die on the operating table, I really have no concern about that. I have literally no fear of that. Death for me is not an issue. I don't think pain is an issue. And I know on the nights where I feel pain starting usually about eight or nine o'clock at night and knowing it probably will go through the night and probably keep me up. Fear arises and there's really nothing I can do about it. So I just go, okay. I mean, really what else, what else can one do when fear comes up in a biological sense? It really uh, impacts and where, where do you run? I mean, I do know people who run to all sorts of different uh, denials and medications and alcohol and, you know, there's things to do to not look at your fear. But fear is so endemic, both to each of us as individuals, it's so part of the biology of the human being. And it's so part of the culture and the existential truth <clears throat> of the world. Mostly it has everything to do with future unless you're dealing with pain, which is very present tense, but it has to do with future uncertainty, not trusting, not knowing, sensing a trajectory that you don't particularly want to allow to occur. And there you are facing this fear, which is one millimeter or one inch or one minute or one hour away. And Truly, the great teaching from all of the mystics that we know who are, <clears throat> in a way, affecting us is that even looking one second away into the future is too far. But you need to bring your attention back to what? To this. If you're bringing it back to active pain, then you're gonna to have to deal with what that is, how you accompany it, how you handle it. I have found through nights of strange sleeplessness that you can actually do dance with it, if you will. You, it, it, it informs you, it, it's present tense and it is not nice and not fun, but it is very uh, present. And it speaks to the system in ways that the brain doesn't necessarily know what to do with. But in a certain sense, the existential underlying truth of it is very vibrant. But mostly we don't have that. Mostly we don't have pain in the moment. We have relatively benign, simple, quiet calmness mostly. Now we can bring the future pain into that moment and stir things up, but why? Why? 
well, habitual patterning, you know, taught to us by our ancestors, our parents, grandparents, they all had their worries and fears and they embedded them in us. And so often we sit in the present tense moment and we experience uh, this disturbance. But it is really something we are doing. We are actively bringing the future, the fear of pain or fear of anything from the future into the now. And you don't have to do that. You can really take a breath and ask for help to, as Rudy would say, surrender or accept the present tense. Now, even if that means accepting the pain, the moment you begin to accept it and not fight it, it changes its chemistry. It becomes something that simply is. And if there's not a lot of reaction to it, it just is there. But if there's no pain there, if there's only the fear of pain, if there's only the fear of anything, just the future, and you go, please help me to accept, that fear begins to minimize itself and draw you back into the truth of this moment, which is really, you're fine. There's not that much happening in this moment, probably, that is a cause for fear, unless you wanna project it outward, then sure, you can fill yourself to the brim with fear. But if you can just come into, as Eckhart Tolle told us, the power of now, fear is not an active principle unless you give it the power to be active. So learning to be quiet inside is a gift. And you can do it moment to moment to moment until you can't. And the only real reason that most people can't is because of the intensity of uh, immediate pain. But if you are dealing with anything that's future, anything that's causing you this problem, then what you need to do is ask for help to surrender and find where you are. And when you find where you are, you can find these, and I've talked about this for 50 years, so it's not totally new, these doorways into you. And they're really there. If you open your heart or your mind or your gut, you discover, oh, this is okay. It's okay. In fact, it can even be better than okay. It can actually be comforting. It can be warm. It can be embracing. It can take you in. It can even lift you up. It can take you out of all of your worldly concerns and just give you a sense that we are within something so much bigger than our mind, our heart, or our gut even can contemplate. If you can do that, then you've touched what people call the spiritual, the realm of upliftment, the realm of, of being able to live beyond the future, beyond the past, totally in this moment, which when you really deeply enter it, has this power to encompass, to comfort, and to uplift. And to choose upliftment over fear, if you can do that, is a better choice. If you can just say, please help me to let go of the dynamic of, oh my God, what's going to happen in the future, tomorrow, next year, next decade, just bring that back in and go into the power of the presence of this moment, go inside, surrender, you will be cared for. You will be comforted. If you are not comforted, if you go into the present and all you find is your fear, well, that's a signal. And the signal is there is work to do. There is work to do. And that work is what Rudy called practice, where you keep asking, breathe, Hold your breath, go into your heart, say, please help me to surrender. Please help me to accept whatever it is, but it's an active involvement of you with you. 
And you go into this place and you keep working it until there's a result. And results are important. And the result would be, ah. And you walk away from, step back from the fear, the anxiety, the future presentation, the years of indoctrination. You just step away and you sit still in the midst of this. And when you sit still in the midst of this, you will find the thing you're looking for. That's all there is to it. Yes, it's work sometimes. <clears throat> yes, it's hard sometimes. Yes, it takes practice. And maybe you can even say years of practice. But nobody would stay with it if there weren't some moments of result. If you did this for 30 years and there was no result, well, I'd say, well, I don't know what I would say. I mean, you know, there's some kind of wonderful hope inside you and some kind of, you know, wish, which is good. Rudy talked about wish a lot. But result is what Rudy talked about more than anything else. And result is when you find yourself in the moment, you will usually find <clears throat> that that moment, not projected into the next one, just that moment is, as I've often said recently, full of grace or full of grace notes. <clears throat> These little tiny moments that go, ah, oh, and you can hold on to that. Not hold it like grasping, but just allowing it to stay there. Because the next moment is still in the present tense. It's still the now. It still is offering you the opportunity to be present and not be fearful. Now, <clears throat> I will say, and not to anybody's surprise, that the world we are living in right now is fearsome. It gives us a lot of reason to be fearful. And as we go step by step into it, every day, it gets stranger, darker, weirder, other. And we can go into it like this, going, oh my God, this is horrible, and I don't want to go there, and whatever. We can put our heads in the sand, which I have acknowledged that I've done by turning off the news for most, I mean, now suddenly I'm back in the news again, but some of the worst stories like Afghanistan have kind of dissipated, which is what you know, I need to have happen. I mean, Afghanistan hasn't gone anywhere, but the, the announcement of it, the pain of it has not, is not coming full frontal. On the other hand, the pain of Afghanistan, which is also the pain of millions and millions of suffering beings in the world has never, ever not been there. And part of my own journey spiritually, which is a journey of some kind of awakening to something beyond just Bruce is that I am not just Bruce. I am, because we all are, everyone. We are the totality. And in that totality is enormous pain and suffering. Also joy, excitement, expectation, hope, faith, take it all. But it's a big world out there and we are one with that enormity. And when you're seeing the dark side projected at you, at least from our video uh, screens, we, we get a, perhaps a misrepresentation of a particular kind of intensity of darkness and fear. And we imbibe it. And when we take it in, that we have to work harder to let it go. We just do. And if you don't do that, if you don't want to do that work, well, you know, go head hog into the world of fear. It's around you. It will take you in. It will take over your life if you want it to. And then if you want to dig your way out of it again, without having practiced, it's just like going to the gym, having not been there for six months or a year, you cannot start where you left off. If you go back to the gym after a year, you got to build up again. Spiritual work is the same thing. If you don't have the mechanism working for you, you have to go back inside and slowly build up this capacity to open to and surrender to the simplicity, the uplift, the joy of this moment. Most people that I know now and that I speak with are very um, in touch with, maybe consumed by, maybe uh, let's just say affected by the global 
pandemical awareness that life is not what it was, that it's feeling strange, it's feeling weird, it's feeling uncomfortable. Some of us are very, very disturbed by it. Some of us are experiencing real physical and biological uh, issues that are really dangerous in a way to our longevity. That is very real. That takes a particular kind of work. But the day-to-day -day work of life, of just getting back to, I can do this, I can beat the fear. And actually beating the fear is a strange idea, but for some reason last night on television, everything I was watching was about people beating fear. I don't know why that was the subject of the movie that I watched and stuff on TV. And it really, it really spoke to me. Fighting your fear, moving beyond your fear is something that people try to do. Engage your fear, go into the, go into it. Well, there's some truth to that. Going into the fear means going into the present tense. If fear is there, and you can stare it down, if you will, or you can go, please help me to surrender, which means in a way not to escape fear, but to allow it to be there and not react to it, not give it its power, not give it its dynamic. And watch what happens when you don't feed something like fear. Watch what happens. It starts to crumble away because it's sustained by you. It's the same sustained by your patterning, your continual reaction to the slightest external fear making that the inner part of your being. And if you want to do that, oh, you know, welcome to the human race. Fear of the future is part of the pandemical reality of humanity. But what you would like to do is go, yes, I know that. Yes, I see that. Yes, I feel that. But I am the purveyor of that fear. It has arrived for a reason, but I am the one who is giving it voice. I am the one who is giving it life. I can stop doing that. I can just take a breath. I can let go and watch what happens when fear is not sustained. It just falls away. It's just background noise. And what comes into the foreground is the simplicity of the moment. And every moment has within it this incredible content of, well, it's a million words I can use, grace, gratitude, simplicity, kindness, openness, availability. The moment contains hope. It contains everything, everything. And it's your choice. What do I gravitate toward? What do I hold on to? You make and design your whole inner structure. Nobody else. Now, yes, it's a program, and yes, your parents may have given it to you, and your ancestors from 500 years ago may have written it into your genetic code, but only you can undo that. Only you. And if you do it, it's not that hard. It's just sit down and go, I will be done. Open to the holiness of your own being, the holistic reality of your own being. If you can do that, and it's not hard, it just takes consistency and it takes a real wish. And if you can go there and ask for help to surrender, you can let go of your grip on fear, which you think has a grip on you. It's not true. The grip is you holding, not it. Nothing holds you, nothing holds you. You are the one doing the grabbing for whatever reason. And you're the one who can just go, nope. And it really can be that easy. Nope, not gonna do it. And if it doesn't work, let's say you spend a week or a month of trying not to do it. Believe me, that effort is muscle building. You may not have immediate, oh, wow, look what I just did after two days at the gym. You may not have that, but you will have this practice inside of going, nope, and then there it is again. And then you go, nope. And then you just go, okay, I'm going to live with this. It's like when I go to bed at night and knowing the pain is going to come and there's nothing I can do about it. Literally nothing. There's no, there's no pills. There's not, there's just nothing. So I just get in bed and I, I kind of say, you know, help me get through this. And I lie down and things happen. 
They do every night, something happens. Mostly, I will tell you the, the, the steroid shot I had about a month ago now, three weeks ago, finally has kicked in. So the pain is way diminished. It's not what it was. I have heating pads that will kick in if I need to do something. They're techniques, they're things. And my dream life does all these things. It incorporates the pain into dreamscape. And it kind of is interesting and informative. And somehow I wake up with enough sleep to get through a day. We're all trying to find our way to get through our days. How can we get through them? How can we actually enjoy them? How can we find a reason for wanting to wake up in the morning? And much of that has to do with this idea of being in the present and witnessing what it means to be alive in the moment. And if you can feel what it is to be alive in the moment, you will start to feel this sense of, again, I can use all the words I used before, but I'll throw in the word awe, amazement, wonder. These things really are there waiting. They're not like hidden. If you actually arrive in this present tense moment and look out the window without your mind going, oh my God, it's going to rain, or oh my God, I should have done this yesterday, just let all that go and just look out the window or go outside, you will feel something like, this is incredible. I mean, I don't know the last time any of you looked at the sky and went, how, how is this possible? Or looked at a tree or looked at the grass or anything and just suddenly realized, oh my God, this is really, this is an amazing construct. And it's there with me in it, possibly for me on some level, who knows, who knows? But it's happening, this reality that we experience, whether it's virtual, dynamic, uh, God created, whatever you wanna call it, whatever it is, it is and you are in it, you are alive in it, and you can bring fear and terror and drama and all that stuff into it if you want to your game. But you can also go no to that, and you can bring into it the simple reality of, I am in an amazing space. I don't know how I got here, but it's my job to construct a universe in my, in my being, in my consciousness that comes from choice of saying, I wish to surrender the fear. I wish to surrender all of the stuff that I don't need to have there and just be aware, alive, open, and accepting of the truth of this moment. If you pull that off, even for one minute a day, the grace of that will fill your life. So, <clears throat> Fear is a choice. Fear is something you choose to dwell on. It is something you bring from the future because it's not there in the moment. It's something about what's later, not something what that's present tense. And if it is present tense, that's a different practice. But mostly all we're dealing with is we're building a world based on our expectations of what will come. And it's our world that we're creating change it if you don't like it. Go inside and take a breath and just open to what really is, which is worth it. If you can reach this uplifting energy, this open energy, this heartwarming energy, this caring, comforting energy, you will be so grateful. And it's just waiting for you at any given second. Your choice, your choice. Fear, upliftment. Let's put it at that. Do I go up? Or do I stay here and <clears throat> grovel in what the future might be? I struggle with this, just like you do. Don't think that because I've spent all these years meditating that I got it down. There are maybe a few people, a few Beethoven, Tchaikovsky's out there who are really <clears throat> creating the great symphonies of the world. But most of us are just, you know, just schmucks going through life trying to make it happen. I work with it. I struggle with it. And I share with you what I go through. I have to work my fears out <clears throat> the same way I'm teaching you to work your fears out. It works. I do find my upliftment 
And I do know that you can too. I also have really bad days. <clears throat> Excuse me. So don't think that just because you've been doing this for years, you've got it. We're just humans trying to do it. And it's a practice. And if we get it right, it's a better life than if we don't. So rather than say this in 500,000 other ways, <clears throat> let me just say, choose life, <laughs> choose the moment, choose stillness, choose grace, choose simplicity, choose upliftment, choose joy, and don't indulge the choice of fear. You don't have to. Any, uh, any questions, comments, criticisms? Tara. Thank you so much for this talk today. Thank you, truly. And um, I feel like I, 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 I understand and comprehend it in, in really important times, such as being wheeled in before brain surgery when they shaved my head. And the, the person who's shaving my head said, I've never seen anyone who is more brave and less scared than you right now going into this same surgery. And I shave people's heads every day. And I, I feel like when it's a really crucial thing, I, I got it, I can, I, I get it. And then the day to day, I get really loose track or overwhelmed or unconscious. Cara, that, and that is, that is the, human, the human journey the unconsciousness that we bring to the moment to moment. Yes, the big ones, you know, surgery, dying, I, I, okay. You know, it's the little stuff. It's the day-to-day -day little stuff. What about my grandchildren? What about this? What about that? What about Grace? What about, you know, Talia and Elijah? You know, those are the things that bring me fear, but I weave them into a, a, a fear base that uh, there's no reason to. Last, I saw them yesterday and I saw you yesterday. Their kids were jumping on the trampoline. There's no, there was nothing there. That was fearsome. And so that, that's real life. And if we can let go and be in the moment, we are much better off than if we are you know, projecting this other future. I'm, I'm gonna move on, Wendy. Thanks, Bruce. My question is if you could speak to being present in the practicality of when there's still being plans made. So, you know, we're working, we make plans for the future or tomorrow. I mean, even just a normal schedule. So just, if you could speak to how to be present when we're planning, like in a healthy way. Well, I mean, honestly, uh, the planning is taking place present tense. The planning isn't taking place in the future. It's addressing future things, but it's the, the planning is right now. And you can look at it through open eyes or you go like this, that's one kind of planning. Oh my God, that's going to happen. This could happen. Or you can look at it and go, <clears throat> I don't know what will happen, which is true. You don't. <clears throat> I hope it will be this way, but hope is the key word there. And then you make your plan according to the hope, the faith, the belief that the future will be fine. If the future is clearly going to be full of difficulty, that's a different situation. And then it's still Make the plan according to the best uh, understanding you have of this moment and how this moment will influence the next moment. You can use an open mind for that, an open heart, an open gut, and it will guide you into that. And one of the great things that I have found in my spiritual life, if you want to call it that, is there is information coming through to guide me. And it comes through all the time if you're quiet. If you're in your mind noisy and fearful and making a, you know, a, a projection of terror and stuff, this simple guidance can't find itself into your heart because you're too busy doing this other thing. I cannot tell you how blessed I feel by this larger awareness. I don't know how or why, but 50 years of meditating has opened the doorway to that kind of guidance. You don't even need 50 years. You need one simple day of saying, please help me and just being present. It is always available, but we are not always available. And that's the problem. We are caught up in our particular configuration of how we respond to old patterns. That's really what all we do. And breaking that away, which is 
in a way very simple, but something almost nobody does. Mostly we reinforce the old stuff and live in the old version of our lives and keep it going and keep it going until we face the, the, the inevitability of end, you know, of the, the cliff or whatever you want to call it. And you face that going that you've never, ever been prepared for that one. But, it, you know, but that one will come up just like that. But it's only in the moment. And so if you have worked the moment to moment to moment and you find the grace of each moment, even the cliff will have grace in it. And truly, if I were, if I leave the world on Wednesday, I, nothing, nothing in me feels the, a loss. I mean, yes, I will miss all of you. Yes, I will miss my grandchildren and my wife and the comfort of physical being, but I know all that comes to an end. I have known that since I was a little kid. So if that's finally what takes place, it's like, child, you know, I, I don't know what else to say. Oh no, oh my God. I mean, you don't want that at the very end because you can't grasp on the thing that's being pulled through your fingers. Learning to let go, learning to be in the moment, learning to say yes to transition to the inevitable of whatever may arise is the gift of human life. If you can pull that off, if you are living in entrapment in your own prison of mind, mind crap, that's, that's, it's a choice, literally a choice. Nobody believes it's their choice, but yes, it's really your choice to do that. So plan from your open heartedness, your open mindedness and your open gut level knowing of how to move forward. Okay. Thank you, Bruce. That was beautiful. Thank you so much. Sure. Gena. Bruce, uh, kind of a, the same and, or a double question. Um, when I was a kid, I innately felt and recently working with the uh, spiritual healer kind of um, is brought to me that like pain, like you have a lot of pain. I've been having some and and also, I guess, fear also that may, <clears throat> in its essence and in quality, and I don't know about fear, but I know pain may bring a message or something that we need to hear. And the question is, is fear that? Or how do you differentiate between maybe fear comes up and you need to deal with something or just kind of fear that's just, you know, sitting on top of you, banging on you? your head debilitating you. I don't want to say that fear is a, uh, <clears throat> the wrong thing or fear shouldn't exist in our life. It's there. It's part of our lives. And if it's in the moment, you're going to have to look at it and you're going to have to go, what do you want to say to me? And that it has messages and they, and they are just, as you said, they can be very informative and very awakening. Fear and pain together are very potent. And sometimes the message that comes through from fear is meaningful. Don't go through that door. Don't open that, that lion's mouth. You know, you, you, there, there are times where that fear is really reasonable and paying attention to it in the moment is wise, wise and, and intelligent. Then there's times where fear is just endemic and you're walking around and, you know, fear of everything, don't go out of the house, don't, don't make that phone call, don't do this, don't do that. Oh my God, what if? <clears throat> and that is debilitating fear and you do not need to live in that. And it also is you know, honestly your own creation. And if you have chosen to make that your world, well, welcome to the consequences, it's horrible. And I'm telling you, as Rudy told me and other teachers will tell you, you can get out of those consequences by saying, nope, not going there or staring at the fear and just looking at it and not giving it additional power, not nurturing it, just staring at it. It's not as big and powerful as you think if you aren't giving it the, all that force and, and that mindful kind of ingredient that makes it get bigger than it is. We don't need to do that. So not to say that fear is like you know an enemy, it isn't. It's just part of the human equation. But if it becomes the bed you're lying in, you know, why, why make a bed of nails when you can get some nice soft sheets? You know, it doesn't make sense. Um, on a very personal note, I'd like to ask you, um, have you done the work? Have you talked to or felt what your pain is about? And what is it bringing to you, Bruce? Well, yes, I, I do. <laughs> That's all pretty much all I do. Um, uh, I have... 
begun to understand, I've talked about this a little bit in old past, past classes, that a lot of the pain I am experiencing is the pain I knew when I was one and two years old. It has never been resolved. The pain that my mother will not pick me up from the crib when I'm hungry or crying. Wow. Pain that nobody will come in the room and I will be left alone. <clears throat> when I was five years old, I went to have my tonsils out. <clears throat> you may not believe that from my voice, but my tonsils were out. And I was in a bedroom in a, in a hospital with something like 25 other children. And we're all lying in these cribs and we're all having this tonsil, tonsillectomy in a collective way. And I'm lying there. And before the operation, they say, what's your favorite ice cream? I said, strawberry. And they said, okay. When I woke up in all this pain, they gave me chocolate ice cream. I didn't like chocolate ice cream in those days. And I felt totally betrayed. Then it's morning and all of the parents are coming and taking their kids home. And I am the last kid in the dormitory and nobody has come. And the fear that I had at that moment is the fear that I'm dealing with today. My parents did come, but I never got over the possibility that they might not and what that would mean because I loved my parents and I loved my brother at the time. And all, you know, my little, he was then three years old. And, and I, um, I was in a terror state that rises up and it starts to reflect itself now at 78. And I look at it and I go, you know, what is that? I also look at the world and, and like I described Afghanistan, when I hitchhiked through Afghanistan as a kid, I got to be in that environment. I got to be in an environment where everybody carried guns and there was a lot of hostility to women and all this other stuff. But it was an amazing, fascinating place for me. And I've watched with hope that this might turn around and become a much more enlightened world. And I thought in a way it had with some American quote unquote peacekeepers, hoping, keeping that together. And then the idea of taking that away and watching it devolve back into its old madness, that really has impacted me. And there's a fear in me of stupid choices being made by large political entities that we've seen over the last four years that can have terribly detrimental effect on all of us, including my grandchildren and my children and you guys. I have, there's a fear of that. I can't do much with it. But what I have to do when it rises up is go inside, take a breath, and go as I've, in this line, I keep it right here on my, on my computer it's from Neem Karoli Baba, and I give a whole class on it. It says, it is better to see God in everything than to try to figure things out. And that's where I go. But I'm human. And so I, I can't stand what's happening in Afghanistan, and I can't stand the people who are suffering, and I can't stand that people are <clears throat> not taking the vaccine, although I know some people here are not. <clears throat> I do know that I am, I have very strong feelings and I'm, I'm a person and I wish it were otherwise. But at this point in time, I have to go through my personal journey and I do it with my spiritual practice. <clears throat> Excuse me. And my spiritual practice says, say no to that. And I do over and over, sometimes with amazing success and sometimes not. And then on the times where it's not, I go, how the hell can you sit in front of this group of people and give a class? How can you talk when you have this much fear of bubbling up? And then I don't know what to tell you. Watching my grandchildren jumping in the trampoline took my fear away. And I go, oh, your grace, grace took it away. You know, and that's kind of how it works. So I'm trying to be as open and honest with you. I'm not trying to pretend to be a person who has total joy and bliss as my life and no fear of anything. I'm just a person. But I've learned so much and I'm sharing not just the Bruce story, but this thing that comes through, which I do not understand, but I know I've created a channel for it over a course of many years and it has an articulate voice and it says what has to be said. Fear is our creation more than anything else. Yes, it exists in nature. Yes, it exists in the world. I go to my pond out in front of my house, and as I step close to it, every frog and tadpole jumps away. Pure fear of me. I'm not going to try to harm the frogs. 
or the tadpoles, but they have it built in. It's part of nature. If we want to indulge fear, we can, but we have a choice that we've learned and we can let it go. Let it go. Just takes practice, just takes work. Anybody else? Uh, Bruce, could you speak for a second on positive thinking, which seems like it might be the almost the opposite of fear. It's so, I remember something, I remember something uh, Rudy said in one of his videos where he said, if you step in dog shit, don't go around giving every dog a dirty look. Just know that something good is coming. Yeah, that, that was, I always liked that. <laughs> yeah. You know, Rudy used to turn stuff around like that. And yeah, if your mind is giving you dark stories and give it, give it good stories, turn it around, make it a happy story. Think of something good that happened in your life that overcomes or takes care of or just replaces the dark story, but don't, don't, it's not just stories and it's not just, you know, pretending to be happy as opposed to being sad or joyful as opposed to fearful. It's really, really about trying to be present tense with the very thing that underlies present tense, which is presence, presence, be present. And you will see present, being present is very fulfilling. It takes care of a lot. You don't have to do anything. You just step aside and this thing comes in. So you don't have to be positive as opposed to be negative. You just have to be. And one of the true simple natures of being is that if you sit quietly and watch what happens in the nothingness of being, what arises is relatively, mo mostly in my experience, starts with love and kindness and goodness and beauty. And it's wonderful. That's mostly what arises. And if you get out of the way, your mind isn't trying to counterbalance things. It just happens. And you're supported by that. You're the problem. Trying to be positive is the same muscle that's trying to be negative. So that can often just be a war. So let go, surrender, open, and watch what comes up. And in my experience, most of the time, what comes up is beautiful. There are times what comes up is not beautiful then you have to do, do your work or just accept it and see what happens. Accept what is and watch what happens. It's, it's very telling. That's all I can tell you. You'll, you'll learn a lot from saying yes to what is. Okay. George, is that a question or a goodbye? <laughs> I, can't, I can't hear you. You're, you're on mute. George, you're on mute. Just a comment. To it. I saw a quote this morning somewhere. It said, "If you look up, you see rainbows. If you look down, you don't." You know, so it's what you where you're looking at, what you're looking for. Yeah, no, that, I mean, very true. I agree. I, I mean, not that I have to agree, but I, but, but yes. Um, you design, the, you design the direction of your day to day life, and if you look up at the sky, it's a different thing than looking at an ant hole. It's just different, you know, and it's up to you. And who's, de who's determining where you put your attention? Well, it's your history, it's your patterning, but it's also, if you break your attention from patterning and just be, this thing will come and it will actually do the direction for you. It will, it will, it will tell you, not tell you even, it will help you. You'll suddenly want to be, you'll find yourself looking up. You won't even know how you're looking up but you're looking up because this force which you've opened up to is guiding you toward all of these moments of grace that are filling your life if you were ever opening your eyes to see them. So uh, yes, thank you. Is this enough for everybody? I know it goes on and on and on, but thank you for coming. Uh, I appreciate it. <clears throat> Next week, and the week after, I cannot speak to you yet. I may or may not teach class depending upon how, how, how the surgery goes. Uh, if not, I'll send out a note <clears throat> to everybody if there's no class. If, there's a, if there is a class, it'll be the New York class and I will write to them and you can turn on your, <clears throat> on your um, YouTube and hear the talk if there's a talk. And if not, I'll see you guys in you know, like a month or whatever it may be. But thank you for tuning in today. I am very appreciative. I love you guys so much. And, and I'm truly grateful.
grateful to what you bring forth because it's possible. I get messages from people I've never met that some of the things that are being said to you are helping them. So I don't know how that works, but I'm grateful for it. And it wouldn't happen if you weren't sitting there pulling this in. So thank you for doing that. Lots of love to everybody. Be well.